Hi, I'm Mike Clizzy with the Finger Lakes Grape Program. We're here in Branchport, New York today to talk about dormant grapevine pruning. As you can see, it's winter out and it's typically the time of the year when people prune grapes. Before you start pruning, it's important to know the different parts of a grapevine. Let's go over some grapevine anatomy. This is a bud. A bud is a compound structure from which shoots arise in the spring. Here we have a trunk. Trunks are vertical woody parts of a vine that connect the root system to the fruiting portion. Here we have a cordon. Cordon is a long, usually horizontal woody part of the vine where spurs are found. Here are some canes. Canes are one-year-old woody structures retained for fruiting in the coming growing season. Canes are essentially long spurs. They are typically five buds long or more. This is a spur. Spurs are two to five bud long canes kept for bearing fruit or as a point of renewal. This is an inner node. Inner nodes are the part on the cane between two buds. This is a non-count bud. It is a bud found anywhere else on the vine other than the node on a cane. Oftentimes they are found at the base of a cane and should not be included when counting buds for pruning. Shoots are succulent growth that come from the bud during the growing season. Leaves, fruit, stems, and tendrils are all found on shoots. Once a shoot drops its leaves and becomes woody, it is considered a cane. You may be wondering why we prune grapes. Well, the main reason is to control the yield. If a grapevine was left unpruned, it would have hundreds of fruit-bearing nodes that could potentially produce fruit. Having all that fruit on the vine would cause it to become unbalanced. Unbalanced vines fall into two categories, overcropped and undercropped. Overcropped vines are vines with, that have too many buds left on them after pruning. Fruit from overcropped vines will have lower bricks levels, reduced colors, flavors, and aromas in the juice at harvest. Eventually, overcropped vines will lose productivity and die. Overcropped vines also have a hard time lignifying canes. This means after producing fruit last year, the vine didn't have a lot of carbohydrate reserves left in it to harden off the wood. As you can see here, this is a cane that did not lignify properly last fall. It's very easily broken and the inside of it is brown as opposed to a live cane which would be green. This makes it harder to find good canes while pruning next year. An overcropped vine will produce canes that are excessively vigorous, also known as bullwood or bull canes. Bull canes tend to have excessively long inner node lengths and can be extremely thick in diameter. These canes are also not very fruitful. If the inner node length is longer than the handle you're pruning shears, chances are it's too long. The best size wood to retain is pencil diameter. And this cane is of the perfect size. Here is some insect damage you might find while pruning. It is always a good idea to prune out any insect damage. These injuries cause canes to become weak and snap easily during tying. It is also important to tell the vineyard manager about any of these you may find. In the cool climate region, such as the Finger Lakes, it is important to assess buds for cold injury. For more information on checking buds for cold injury, you can refer to this video on our YouTube page. You might think that leaving extra buds on a vine is a good idea. However, that is never a good idea. It is always important to prune the vine to the proper number of buds based on the vine's size. When pruning, you typically cut off 80 to 90% of last year's growth. Medium to darker colored canes will be more fruitful than lighter colored ones. When comparing cane color, it is important to compare the same variety. There is a huge difference between the color of a Concord cane and that of a Riesling cane. That is why it is important to make the comparison between the same varieties. A darker colored cane means that it was exposed to more sunlight while growing the previous year. The more sunlight a developing bud receives, the more fruitful it will be. Balanced pruning is all about balancing the vine's vegetative growth with its crop load based on the size of that vine. To do this, we measure the weight of the one-year-old wood on that vine. A large vine should have more buds left after pruning, and a small one should have fewer buds. This is because the larger vine has more capacity to ripen a larger crop, 
whereas the smaller vine has the capacity to ripen only a small crop. Therefore, we need to leave more buds on large vines and fewer buds on smaller vines. Some vineyards may choose to adjust this based on desired fruit chemistry outcomes. So the theory behind weighing the one-year-old cane prunings is that if a vine has a lot of this large diameter wood, bull wood that we call it, the whole bundle here is gonna weigh more. So typically that means that that vine's gonna be larger, which would lead you to leave more buds on the vine. If it had a lot of this smaller, more spindly type material, it's gonna be a smaller vine in general, so you would, the whole bundle would weigh less and you would then wanna leave fewer buds. So what we do is make sure our scale's on zero, hook it in here, and we find out that this weighs 1.75 pounds. So if you're using the standard 20 plus 20 formula for vinifera, that means you're gonna leave 35 buds on this vine. You would leave 20 for the first pound of pruning weight and then 20 for the next pound. But since it's only three quarters of a pound, we're leaving 15 buds rather than 20. So that means we're gonna leave 35 buds on all the vines in this vineyard. Now let's take a look at some common trellis systems in the Finger Lakes. Here we have top wire cordon. It uses cordon stretching in both directions about six feet off the ground. Spurs of two to five buds long are retained for fruiting. In the Finger Lakes, we typically see this system used on native Labrusca varieties such as Concord, Niagara, and Catawba. The umbrella system uses canes that are arched from the top wire about six feet off the ground to a lower wire about four and a half feet off the ground. This is often used on varieties such as Cayuga White and Concord. A flat cane trellis is used for most vinifera grapes grown in the Finger Lakes. It is the foundation of a vertical shoot position system. Canes are tied down to the fruiting wires at about 36 inches off the ground. A few renewal spurs are left in the head of the vine to produce next year's canes. The low wire cordon is basically a lower version of the top wire cordon system with shorter spurs. Cordons in this system are about 30 inches off the ground and spurs are typically two to three buds long. The Scott Henry trellis system is used for excessively vigorous vines that have a vertical growth habit. It is a divided canopy method that can use either canes or cordons with spurs. During the growing season, Shoots from the bottom fruiting wire are trained towards the ground and kept in place with a rake wire, while shoots from the top wire are trained upward into the traditional VSP catch wires. Now that we have discussed the basics, you can click on any one of these annotations to learn more about pruning for a specific trellis style.